Hello YouTube. We have visitors. The grey kangaroos who didn't come this morning. They want to be boyfriend or perhaps visiting cousin Billy Big Arms was here. But the does were somewhere else entirely. Possibly hanging out with an older bloke. And we had some rain in the middle of the day. So this is their first visit. To catch up on their treat food. What's the matter? Yeah, what's the matter? I'm allowed to squat down. Ooh. You think not, do you? Princess of the black spot. Miss Bossy Booties. What do you think, Sissy? And Joey? Princess's two footlings. I'm hoping this Joey makes it. It'll be Sissy's second, I think. Never yet seen a doe, either swamp wallaby or grey kangaroo <coughs> succeed in raising the first joey uh, old enough that it has a joey of its own successfully mothering a kangaroo was sufficiently difficult that they all pretty well they all in my observation will lose their first joey to experience We're in a very vocal mood today. Hopefully I get you some biscuits, eh? Come on. That's it. Really aperture dominant this thing. There is a pegging order. And the geography consists of overlapping territories because Princess here is the queen doe of the eastern grey kangaroos in this clearing. 
but Felicity is the Queen Swamp Wallaby. And there are two Wallaroos, both about the same age. So they don't live so much centred on the clear. Well, they're not in the clearing as around the clearing. This is very vocal today. Oh well, I suppose I must go and split the peace and tranquility by starting up a chainsaw and cutting a bit of firewood. It's pretty nice at the moment. We had a millimetre of rain in the middle of the day. My morning's activities having focused on adding 20% to the yurt's solar array. Twenty five watts or so from the nineteen seventies, two ten watt panels from the twenty tens, twenty teens, seventy watts from twenty twenty one. So hundred and ten watts in theory. Day, I saw it put out 128 watts, which is as much as a 10 amp solar charge controller can deal with. So, not a bad system. I think I worked it out to be 128 watts as opposed to this, which I have measured at 168 watts. And a week or so ago, on a blue sky day, after two or three cloudy days with one of them raining, this produced 52.8 amp hours, as indicated on this charge controller, which habitually indicates around about 0.9 of the actual ampage going through. So here we see it says 7.5 amps. As we come over here, we're actually sitting on 9 amps. So 52.8 amps indicated fifty-two point eight indicated times 1.1, 58.08 amp hours, times 14 of the volts, 813.12 watt hours. Oh, golly gosh. 746 watt hours is one horsepower hour. And even... If you were to process it with the original indicators, 52.8 instead of 58, you'd still come up with 736 watt hours, which is almost a horsepower. So let's just say it's a reasonable observation that the Tower of Power can produce on a sunny day in winter the equivalent amount of excited electrons is one horsepower for one hour worth of work. 
Yeah, it's not bad. I'm pretty sure the array has modified on the yurt. Changing of the guard, huh? Hmm. Yes, and, and Mummy took us away with her. So you're going to have to come and get this one. Come on, that's it. There you go. That's the one. So let's just say that the um, the yurt array is now capable of 40 amp hours a day, maybe 45 amp hours a day. 630 watt hours which is 0.844 of a horsepower hour. So the yurt has mm, almost 85% as much electricities as the Tower of Power on the Pyramid makes available to me. And it's got 60% of the storage. I have six batteries, it has four. All right. This gets to be quite a popular little restaurant, doesn't it? Yeah. Cliff here would like a feed as well. Hmm? Is that right, you'd like a feed? Yes, yes, you're licking your lips too, aren't you? Yes, you're a good boy, aren't you, honey? And you will be throwing handouts to keep you away from the swamp wallaby. Because uh, carrots work better than sticks. Don't they? Hey? Carrots work better than sticks. <laughs> Reward the good behaviour. Don't fantasize you can make the world a better place by punishing what you think is bad. Sound right, does it? <laughs> Coming back for more. I'm really not going to enjoy missing doing this every day. This time next week, when I'm 200 miles away, What's the matter? Did you did you drop it? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Really? Come on. <laughs> you think someone's gonna take it away from you, don't you? Hey? You think you're not high up enough in the pecking order to stand your ground here? Hmm? But you know your place. Yeah, you are the ranking alpha male swamp wallaby in the pool, overlapping territories. That's this is. Here we have Princess with the black spot, ranking eastern grey kangaroo doe, and Felicity, ranking swamp wallaby doe, overlapping territories. I don't call it the interspecies forest community for nothing. It's just how this place works. Isn't that right, mate? Hmm? That's a boy. Yes. Yes. You're a good bloke, aren't you, eh? Yes, I remember you. I knew your grandmother when she was a joey in the pouch, mate. Yeah. I am your family's traditional pet tome human. Yeah. You probably knew her great-grandmother. As the jelly in the pouch.
Did you chase away the kangaroos? Did you? Hey? Did you chase away the kangaroos? Yes. Because being an alpha male in one species means that lots of other species get out of your way just on principle. So yeah, this time next week I will have had the second of 35 instalments of having me head cooked and I will have had the first instalment of um, cytotoxic potion up the arms in the morning. That starts at 8 o'clock next Monday morning. And these fellas are going to have to get by with either no treat food or whatever they can coax out of my daughter. No, this was in a patch of shade the camera wouldn't show. I can't say I particularly enjoyed last week's visit to Coffs Harbour. The radiology consultation wasn't so bad, not too terribly frightening. Quite interesting having the mask made to hold me down. Chemotherapy appointment wasn't anywhere near as enlightening and enticing, actually. They didn't actually tell me what mechanism of action or intended effect or any of that was. Spent a lot of time mentioning various side effects but wouldn't give me any rate of side effects or incidence of side effects. You know, like if you got a hundred people who were my age blokes who drank too much for too long and you give a hundred of us cytotoxics a locally advanced cancer of the mouth and head and neck how many of us get crippling side effects? You know, like is it going to be 5% or is it going to be 50%? Is it going to be higher than 50%? And instead of telling me whatever the actual figures are, I got told that they don't have such figures. Oh, nobody can predict. Well, I wasn't asking for a prediction. I was asking for an incident. So... I'm pretty sure in order to get cisplatin, name of the drug I'm going to be taking, in order to get cisplatin, daughter going off to town, kind of fun having the offspring living 50 yards away. But anyway, as I was saying, in order to get approved by the Therapeutic Goods Administration, I would nearly bet an arm or a leg this drug has been tested, <coughs> they've done all kinds of studies on it, and at some point, somebody from the drug company who wanted the government to approve it so it could be not only sold in Australia, but sold at subsidised rates paid for by the government, they would have had to explain to the government, well, you know, Yes, there are side effects, and yes, the side effects can be pretty devastating, but very few people get those side effects that are devastating, and, you know, a considerable majority, if not a vast majority, get a whole lot of benefit from taking that risk. And as I said, they've got this big industry set up down there. And instead of answering questions as long as the patient keeps asking coherent questions, giving them answers to it. No, they just seem to have this, you know, tick a box format for the appointment where you get told enough to get shit frightened out of you, but you don't get told enough data points to be able to process a coherent response. So on the one hand you just got to take a blind flying leap of faith in modern medical technology 
Um, and on the other hand, you know, I'm not going to be here for a whole lot longer if I don't get something done. So taking a risk with the treatment might be absolutely bloody horrible and it might not do any good, but it, it might do good. <laughs> it's either that or curl up and wait to die. So, yes, I'm going to miss being here next week. But if I go away for seven weeks, I might be able to come back here for a few more years. If I refuse to go and take the risk, there's no bloody question I won't make it to the next solstice and I might not make it to the next equinox. So, hmm. anyway, on that note, as I said, I'll go and play with my chainsaw and make a bit more firewood. Because I did a bit of that the other day and I made some decent wood for my fire but I also discovered that um, might actually want to conserve that thing for a saw log like it's in surprisingly good condition for a tree that died the first in 2019 in the drought but on the other hand what I need at the moment is firewood so this is stuff sized for my fire. I'll go and make a bit more wood for the yurt fire, which takes a longer log than does mine. But in the meantime, yeah. How's that for a technology sea backroscope? There's got to be 35 years there, maybe 40 years. Good system, isn't it? And look at this. Chrissy was a busy boy yesterday. Link strap. One end is positive, one end is negative. Positive link cable to the upper battery bank. Battery positive to inverter in the earth. Solar charge controller to battery positive. Solar charge controller to battery negative. Backup charge of the battery positive. Negative link cable to other battery bank negative. Backup charge of the battery negative. Labels, labels, every wire. Four volt DC to inverter, two core flex. Backup charger, 240 volt AC power cord. Four volt link cable. Connecting V plus H with I plus J. We have H. We have G. And over here, we have J plus I there's only three bloody wires in the whole box there's the link strap and there's the link cable okay so the inverter is pulling 1.45 amps I'm going to guess that's probably a cat pad solar array is putting out 0.62 of an amp as a feature of the sun being well below the tree shadow horizon. Uh, 10 amp charge controller says that battery voltage is above 12.6 and sun's up in the sky and the batteries are charging. And 0.55 of an amp out of the 1.45 amps which is going into the inverter is coming here from the link cable so that battery is putting out a third of the load this battery is putting out must be a third of the load because there's only 0.6 of an amp coming in from the solar charge controller so yeah you can have a lot of fun when your cables are labeled and you've got a clamp meter in that right spitty the one-eyed pussycat. 
is pretty good. This is how Peter is on. Air is hot. Inverter is running. And now, by the miracle of Warble's technology, we have a multimeter hardwired to the inverter together with a 13.01 volt. 92.5% full indication while sucking 1.5 amps. That's not a bad result for a day in which we've had one millimetre worth of rain. And look at that there then. I'm trying to pass on a few trays and tendencies. Apparently, so it would seem. Turns out little darling likes playing sims on a lapping of the top. When that occurs, well, it takes 10 amps out of the batteries to run the inverter if the laptop is just playing the game. If the laptop is actually charging its own batteries, well, that can go up to 12 amps. So if you were to have a blue sky, five or six hours worth of unblemished sunlight on this array it can put up about you know 40 amp hours a day if you were to do nothing else at all electrical yeah she could play the sims for three or four hours and it turns out she's she's of a mindset where if you can't get six hours of playing with the sims it's not worth turning the computer on so <clears throat> In her ideal application, when you've got a rainy day and you can't go to work and therefore you've got to do nothing but sit in the yurt and feed wood to the fire, you might play The Sims for 18 hours, 12 amps. Um, <clears throat> that would take six times as much solar power as my system can provide on a blue sky sunny day. That would be more like my mother's size solar system which would be about a $20,000 exercise. I know she paid $12,000 for 800 amp hours worth of batteries at uh, 24 volts, and that required $2,500 for a new 240 to 24 volt gel cell charge controller. And then, you know, there was an inverter and panels on the roof. On it. it would be a $20,000 exercise to make enough solar power to be able to run that laptop for 18 hours on a rainy day and then recharge the next day and not beat the shit out of your batteries. So, <clears throat> therefore, I had occasion to make a solid pup tent, cobbled up from road signs, of course. Aluminium road sign, forming the ridge cap pop riveted to a couple of steel road signs, off cut aluminium extrusions left over from making the solar panel bracing for my fridge mount on the roof of the hut and I decided not to be too obnoxiously glary and glary in the midnight moonlight, or the torch light actually, so the reflective sides on the inside and look at what the daughter found on the internet. Gen tracks digital inverter. And yeah, 800 watts maximum, 700 watts maximum continuous. Starts up, runs for a bloody long time. Sucks in cold air from the sides and blows out hot air plus exhaust. With the expired cooling air surrounding the exhaust, and they'll keep the sun and the wind and the rain off the whole bloody system. Neat can charge at 10 amps maximum, but probably 8 amps would be safer. So, one litre would run that for about 4 hours at 8 amps. Put 32 amp hours into the battery while running the yurt. 
supplying power to the computer and this can put out yeah like i said 40 amp hours on a really good day you can probably count on 30 amp hours on a 50 percent cloudy day now i'm pretty sure the generator cost about 320 or 350 dollars and to get 110 watts worth of solar panels you might have to pay 250 dollars maybe 180 dollars i don't know so the solar array would be cheaper than the generator and the solar array is going to make you um, roughly 30 amp hours per day <clears throat> 30 amp hours per day made in the generator is going to run through a litre of petrol per day and a litre of petrol is about two dollars and fifteen cents at the moment so at today's prices if you were to run this four hours a day to run the battery charger to put 30 amp hours a day into batteries assuming you already had the batteries and the inverter and the battery charger just to give you a bit of lights and a bit of phone charging ability and a little bit of computer time maybe not simming for a whole lot of time but if you were getting 30 amp hours per day out of this it's going to run through twice its purchase price worth of fuel in the first year so instead of saying that thing's going to save $750 worth of petrol in its first year let's say that it only saves about $500 worth because there's going to be days when it doesn't produce any bloody thing and that's why you have to have something like that that you can fall back on backup generator see but yeah that array at the moment given a sunny day is capable of replacing about four dollars fifty worth of petrol assuming all you want is just a little bit of electricity not a whole lot just enough to get by on and, uh, you know, look at this. Isn't that interesting? We have added graffiti to the post industrial Mad Max world look of the setup. But at least it's a smiley face. That has got to be a bonus. Yeah? I didn't do it, of course. Not the sort of thing I would do, but I don't disapprove of it. I'm prepared to add it to the things that I see when I look out my door and go over to check on how the door is doing. And as regards noise, in order to hear her generator when it's operating, I have to come to here, level with the back of my car. If I'm over here, level with the front of my car, Perhaps if I turn the radio off before I come outside, I might be able to hear that generator running at night. Otherwise, no. Really nice little silent generator. And, yeah, now I really should go and take the chainsaw for a walk. And lately, I've been playing with the cheapie, which I think cost me $135 when I bought it. And I've since had to give it $100 worth of new bar and new chain. Of course it's 0.325 of an inch rather than 3 eighths of an inch it had to acquire its own $60 parallel file as well but it's possibly a mite unfair to include the cost of the file in the cost of the saw it is something that you have to deal with when setting it up and the fact was the original bar and chain had not been case hardened so after two hours nothing was the right shape because it had all been worn out by the friction and it wouldn't cut straight it would would wander off to the side and get its bar stuck in the wood and it was a total pain in the ass so yes your 135 dollar chainsaw needed a hundred dollars worth of new bar and new chain and because it didn't ever use to balance right it used to fall over on its nose it's got a 16 inch bar instead of an 18 inch bar as did my son and when we're using these things, both of us noticed from the get-go that 
they don't keep their train tension particularly well. But pretty much, you know, every half an hour when you're refueling, you have to retension the train. His has got an even stranger condition in that you set the tension and you move the train and it goes loose. And you move it further and it goes tight. And eventually we determined that the end roller in his new bar is eccentric. It's not, its central hole is not round. So you've got this egg-shaped roller going around there, pulling tight on the train and letting it go slack, and pulling tight and letting it go slack. So I think he's going to be up for a replacement bar probably from the place he bought the original one. The original replacement, I mean. Anyway, I am babbling and talking chainsaws, and this video has probably been going on long enough. But, you know, it's been a bit quiet since the uh, video of the Fiat and the Morris in the main street, so I thought I probably should make another video showing how I am, you know, still enjoying life on the endangered species sanctuary. Deliberately savouring the flavour, if that makes any sense, because I know that I'm not really looking forward to going down to Coffs Harbour and being stuck in the city, but it's got to be done, so I'll do my best to put up with it, but by gee, I'm enjoying up being up here at the moment. So, there you go. Now you know. Warbles on to the YouTube. Ciao.